Okay, you guys have to excuse my voice. I've, I've got a cold, so talking is a little difficult. Um, this is a follow-up to the video we did the other day about torque converters. And going through the comments, I noticed that a lot of people don't really quite grasp the significance of that initial hit and the 60-foot time. Because the 60-foot is everything. What a lot of people, and you don't really have to be interested in drag racing per se to, to appreciate this or to get something out of this. Just performance in general. So, what you have to understand about the drag strip is that it has different parts of the drag strip have a different value as far as elapsed time goes. So, the starting line or the point where the car goes from stationary to, mo to mobile is the most critical part. It's the part where the most radical change comes in. That's where a body at rest becomes a body in motion. And then the finish line, the last foot. So the first foot is the most important. The last foot, it, it doesn't even show up. Like the, it, on an average time slip, the last foot of the drag strip won't even, won't even show up. It's the first hit that counts. And it's the 60 foot mark that counts the most. Now the, the 60 foot is the standard of measurement for starting line performance. It's, it's the sacred number that like all calculations and tuning are, are, are based off of or, or, or included in. So he, here's what you need to understand about the 60 foot time. Well, a couple of things. The first is exactly what is the value of a tenth of a second? What is a tenth of a second? So to put it in perspective for you, the average person blinks their eyes between 10 and 12 times a minute. Right? And the, an eye blink, an individual eye blink, lasts for one-tenth of a second. So go ahead and blink your eyes, okay? That's a tenth of a second. Right. It doesn't seem like a lot of time, right? Okay. Now, the 60-foot number that we use was arrived at not because there's any particular magic to the 60th foot of the drag strip, but because when these time, when the incremental times started becoming part of our, our tuning tools in the middle 1980s, it was determined that to have one standard that would fit like every class of car, you'd need a timer that was set up where the cars weren't wheeling through it or wheeling past it. Because remember, the, the timer, the elapsed time begins when the car breaks the electronic beam at the starting line. Now, if the car wheelies over the next set of beams to give you a time, let's say, for, for that initial hit, the first foot, first three feet, first 10 feet, whatever it happens to be, if the car wheelies past that, you're not going to get an accurate time because you're going to break the beams with the front wheels on the starting line, and then you're going to break the, the second set of beams with the rear wheels. So you're not going to get an accurate time, a consistent time. So it was determined then that approximately 60 feet out, the vast, vast majority of cars are going to have their front wheels back settled on the track and they'll be able to break that photo cell at 60 foot consistently. Now the 60 foot time is a little foreign to people who were around, let's say in the 60s, the 70s, and the early 80s, or even actually most of the 80s, because the incremental times, the 60 foot, the 330 foot, the 660 foot, the 1,000 foot, and the 1,320 foot time that we know today, and we get on a quarter mile time slip. Obviously, on an eighth mile, you don't get the 1,000 foot, and you don't get the, the 1,320. But those times didn't start to appear on time slips, the incrementals, until 1986, 1987 or so. And that was only at like the, the bigger tracks. Smaller tracks didn't start getting into the incrementals until like well into the 90s. So old timers, when you talk about 60 foot times and stuff, it doesn't really click, it doesn't register to them. So we know that one t an eye blink is one tenth of a second. Now there are other things that equate to a tenth of a second in drag racing also. Like for instance, a tenth of a second is said to be a car length. Right. So in other words, the difference between, let's say, a 14.0 and a 1390, if both cars left the starting line exactly the same time, would be approximately one full car length at the finish line. Also, there's a tenth of a second for every 100 pounds also. And that equates directly to the starting line performance. That's at every 100 pounds is worth a tenth of a second. And again, that's for an average, average car, average GT.
And it's, it's fairly close. It's fairly, it's fairly good in the ballpark. But what exactly is the value of that tenth of a second on the starting line? So years ago, we all had the Moroso power speed calculators where you could put in all of the cars, you put in the car's weight, you put in the horsepower, and you get the ET, or, you, or a mile an hour, or you put in the mile an hour and the weight, and you get, and so, so you can calculate, there's like a, a slide, slide rule, it's a wheel type of thing that you'd, you'd make these calculations on. We all had those back in the day. They're extinct now because we all have phones, and there are, are many calculators in use on the phones that'll, that'll tell you, you've got the car weighs this much and has this much horsepower, and you put in the calculator and it'll give you the ET and the mile an hour that it's supposed to have. And these are theoretical numbers, and the theoretical number is based on the average horsepower. And this is important when it comes to trying to use one of those calculators with a mixed match torque converter. Because those power speed calculators assume that the car launches right at the heart of its power peak. So if let's say your engine makes 400 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, the power speed calculator is assuming that you're leaving the line somewhere right there at the peak. And then through the gear changes and through the, through the finish line, you're maintaining an average of that 400 horsepower at that weight to achieve that ET. So if you've got, let's say, a torque converter that isn't right, that let's say does not allow the engine to come up to that 4,000 RPM right away when the engine makes peak power, but let's say it only lets the engine go to 2,000 RPM and it takes five feet or 10 feet down the track before the engine reaches that 400 horsepower to 4,000 RPM, 400 horsepower, it will skew the numbers. So the, the proper torque converter, putting the engine in its proper RPM range right at the hit is super important. Unless you have that number right, none of the other ones will be accurate. So that's figuring the power speed, but what about figuring just the value of the ETs? So the one that I like to use is Wallace Racing, go just, just Google Wallace Racing calculators, and this one right here. Okay, now this one is just, it's 60 foot to quarter mile calculator. So with this one, you can put in your 60 foot time. And just by going off to 60 foot time, it'll fill in all of the blanks. So let's do this. Let's put in a 2.0 60 foot and hit calculate. So now according to this calculator, I don't know if you can, you can read it on there, but I'll read it to you, the yellow box. So with a 2.0, a two second flat 60 foot, your 330 should be 5.78 seconds, your 660 foot or your eighth mile should be a 908, the, your 660 mile an hour should be 74 miles an hour, your 1,000 foot ET would be 1194, and your quarter mile would be 1439 at 92 miles an hour. And again, see now, that's assuming that everything is in, is in sync. And these things are really accurate. When you get a car that's dialed in correctly, these timers or these calculators work really, really close. All right, so now let's take a tenth of a second off. Let's say that we, we've just improved our 60 foot from a 2.0 to a 1.9, right? So let's do that, put 1.9 in there. We calculate it. And now our 330 is 549. Our 660, our eighth mile time, dropped to an 863. Okay, this is taking one tenth off the hit from the converter. 660 mile an hour is 78 miles an hour. The eighth mile ET is, is 78 miles an hour. 1,000 foot 1135, and your quarter mile ET is 1367. And by my calculations here, that's 0.72. Of a second. So, if you took you took one tenth of you shaved one tenth of a second off your 60 foot time, you're going to shave seven tenths of a second off of your overall quarter mile time. It starts to get a little more dramatic than that. So let's see. You, we, let's drop it down to 1.8. So now we take two tenths off, two blinks of the eye off the starting line performance, the hit, and we end up with 
I'll, I'll, I'll skip through the uh, I'll skip through the, the, the in between numbers. We end up with an 817 60 foot or uh, 660 foot, which is the eighth mile, and we end up with a 1295 on the quarter mile. So taking two tenths off the starting line by let's say a converter change or an RPM change, because you you can make these same calculations with a stick, but just by taking two tenths of a second off the hit, you end up taking 1.44, one and a half seconds off of your overall ET. Two tenths of a second on the starting line equals nearly a second and a half at the finish line. Now, second and a half, right? Now, that's, that's 15 tenths. That's 15 car lengths. The difference in two tenths of a second on the starting line is 15 car lengths at the finish line. I, I, you could get take one of these calculators, you've, you've all got phones, you've all got this little Wallace Racing calculator, and start playing with these numbers because it, it'll be really eye-opening. Let's, uh, let's take another tenth off of this thing. Let's drop the, the, uh, the 60 foot down to 1.7. 1.7. 1 and we get, now taking three tenths off, our eighth mile ET drops to a 772, and our quarter mile drops down to a 1223. So three tenths of a second on the starting line takes off more than two, what is it now? 12, 1295? Yeah, two full seconds, right? Or 20 car lengths. Think about that. Blink your eye three times fast, okay? And that's 20 car lengths at the finish line. Like I said, a lot of old timers, these numbers didn't really exist. So you talk to somebody, you talk to the old timer that used to, you know, jump his front tire over the Coke can in the parking lot, right? You bring up like 60 foot numbers, or you try to explain how, how a 60 foot timer is so important, or why those 60 foot numbers are so crucial to the overall performance, and they just glaze over, they don't understand it. But like I said, it's, it's not every part of the drag strip has the same value. And all of, the, all of the action, all of the motion where that car goes from a standing body, you know, a, a body at rest becoming a body in motion, well, that part, that part right there is literally everything. And street racers know this. Street racers know this intimately, and that's how when they negotiate, and I'm not talking about street outlaws and, and, and all that stuff, but I mean, you know, the, 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 the street racers in the hood, you know, the, the majority of them, they all know these things about, about times, and that's where you get, you know, the brake of the tire is worth X amount, and car, each car length on the starting line is worth X amount at the finish line. But it's important for you to know, if you're trying to gauge your car's performance, you're trying to improve your car's performance, you're not trying to be a drag racer, you don't really care about drag racing, but you want the most performance and you want to get the most rewarding time slips, well, I'm showing you where to find the magic. It's all right there at the 60 foot. All right. I hope you guys got something out of that. Hopefully I can talk better tomorrow and I'll see you tomorrow.